and then um what list of questions you guys have already sent in that we will go through and then if there's any questions in the meantime please be um please put them in the chat function um of this and we will uh, do our best to get to it Cool, Steph, do you want to introduce yourself and kind of go? Yeah, go hey there? everyone. Uh, I'm Steph Davis. I am a Team GB Olympic marathon runner. I competed in the Tokyo Olympic Games in 2021. Um, and yeah, I'm here to kind of help answer any of your queries on ultra training and help you prepare for your event, which is exciting. Cool. So um, I guess we'll, go, we'll just um, straight away go through some of the questions um, and we'll read them out kind of who's from who and we'll keep it on first name, uh, first name terms. So um, Tristan messaging saying, hi, should have already started my race yet. I'll be fine. Right, right. Um, and his race is 19 weeks away and he's doing the 100, 100 kilometer work race. Wow. That, yeah, that's really great. Um, so you've got kind of, yeah, you've got 19 weeks, so you've got loads of time. Um, our 100k, 50k ultra plans are all 16 weeks. So you have a few weeks to play with before your training starts. So my advice would be to do some kind of baseline training and that will, where you start will depend on your ability. Um, at Runner, we have a pre-marathon baseline plan, which is actually five weeks. But what I would advise you do is do kind of three weeks of that plan. And it's generally kind of easy running, just getting you outside, moving, um, kind of easy miles, just building the, the strength in the legs before you start that 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 ultra build. Um, it's it's a great time to kind of just prepare prepare the legs, um, ease yourself into it. So when it comes to sixteen weeks, you're not you're not starting from from scratch. So if you can even just get out for some short easy runs between now and then, I think that will set you up really well. Cool, great. Um. The next one in the last train, and this is quite, actually quite a good one in terms of um, answering it. So in the last training block before tapering, how far is a good distance to do Slow. the longest, longest run? Um, I have planned for a 30 mile run on a similar service. Tom, you're not on mute. Tom, you're, can you please <laughs> go on mute, please? Thank you. Um, I'll, restart, I'll restart that one. Um, I currently run an average of 35 to 40 miles per week, which is split between um, a longer run and a longer and slower and a faster four miles or less runs and repeats. Should I cut back on my weekly uh, mileage to follow the plan? Or if not, how can I adapt it to suit my current volume of training? Yeah, that's a great question. I think it just highlights as well, like how individual training is. And you've got to make sure that you're doing um, a weekly mileage that is suitable for you to prevent you getting injury, injured or reduce your chance of getting injured. So if this is someone who is used to kind of slightly more mileage than maybe the plan suggests, then what I would advise you do is follow the plan. But if you're wanting to kind of build your weekly mileage up to the level that, that you're used to running, then I would do that by adding kind of easy short runs and keep the intensity low, um, the effort really conversational so you're just kind of getting the legs moving banking time on your feet but not adding any more intense volume that's only going to increase your your risk of injury so yeah just and that will set you up for the for the race really well as well because running for 50 to 100k you're not going to be going really really fast especially when you've got different terrains and elevations it's just focusing on that time on your feet so if you're used to running more miles and you could definitely add some some more easy runs in the plan to make to make your mileage up but just be mindful as well if you're doing any progressions week on week just keep to that kind of 10 percent rule so no more than 10 percent increase from one week to the next and every four to five weeks i would suggest doing a deload week as well where you just drop that mileage down by kind of two thirds or even half to really let your body uh, absorb the training um, and and recover from all the hard work before you go again and that's also really important for your bone um, loading our bones kind of grow in kind of four weekly cycles so if we're able to give them a bit of a break um, from all the impacts then we're more likely again to stay injury free thanks um that's a good one i don't live in a hilly place how can i replicate the hill sessions that are on the plan oh good question 
So my advice, you I mean you could get on the treadmill and set the elevate um, the incline on the treadmill and um, vary that to get used to it too. I would suggest if you can um, get jump on the train or, or get in your car and drive out somewhere that is a bit hillier, maybe even just kind of once every couple of weeks over that long run to really expose yourself to to the conditions that you're going to have on race day, because the more you do practice that, I think not only physically will you get the benefit, but mentally as well, you'll kind of know what to expect. So just where you can, if you were able to travel out somewhere that is a bit more hillier, then um, then I would advise that. Perfect. Um, Sarah said, how can I vary the training plans to suit my lifestyle? Certain days I can't achieve the distance or the session that it states. So how to kind of adapt your training around um, your lifestyle? Yeah, another great question. And it's really important that you do adapt the training to suit your lifestyle. Like everyone's going to have different schedules, different commitments. So on days where you're thinking, I've got... I don't know, let's do an example of a 15K run and you're like, there's no way I can get out of 15K today. Even if you can get out the door for four or 5K, that is something. So just do what you can and what fits in well with your schedule. And don't stress if that is means you're doing a lot less than maybe what's on the plan. Just doing what you can um, for your ability, your schedule is going to set you up really well for race day. And you can also adapt it so that maybe one day you're doing a bit less but another day you might be able to tag on a few extra kilometers. It's going to come and kind of, you're going to have peaks and troughs. It's going to, some day, some weeks you'll be able to follow the plan to absolute T and there's going to be other days or other weeks where you're going to struggle to do that, whether it's through life commitments or you're just feeling tired. So it's, it's listening to your body, listening to your schedule and finding that balance because if, if you overdo it, then that's also another thing that's going to add stress and stress is more likely to increase your chance of injury. You're on mute, Katie. You think after three years, I'd learn. Um, we think we've got some questions coming in um, as well, which is great. So we'll just do a couple more from the previous questions and make sure that those are all answered and then we'll head over to the chat function as well. So um, the next question is from uh, Nick. I have recently had gait analysis done on a treadmill to ensure I have correct fitting trainers and bought some recommended trail shoes that can be used on the road. Good. Um, most of my training to date has been on the road um, and I'm now getting pain in my IT band. It's difficult to know if the pain is associated with the new shoes or because I have an increase in the distances I'm running. I'm currently running 23 kilometer long runs once a week with shorter runs during the week. Do you advise for having a pair of trainers for road running and a separate pair of trainers for trail running? I probably would advise if that's a feasible option for you is to having a couple of pairs of trainers. Different trainers are going to load your feet in different ways. So you're, you'll be, again, then loading different muscles and tissues and, and structures in the body. With ITB, it's, it will all come down to kind of strength and flexibility around the hips and the glutes. So you need to make sure that you're strengthening those hip flexors, which are the hips kind of at the muscles at the front of your hips, as well as your glutes and the side of your hips. And you could do things like... Um, using resistance bands doing like clamshells um hip hitches off a step um also making sure that area is not too tight so making sure you're foam rolling down your quad and your um itb and right into the hips as well i quite often have had itb myself using a spiky ball and really getting into that hip joint and around the glutes to loosen off that area. But ITB is one definitely you want to nip that in the bud before you start pushing mileage anymore. Uh, really important you do that before the six yep. weeks start. Paul, oh, you're not on mute. <laughs> cool, that's um, perfect. Um, and the next one is from Stuart. I think this is um, a good one actually, um, just a bit of explanation about the speed sessions in our plans. So um, hi, great looking training plan. Can you explain the difference between an on off session and an over under session? Um, also, what is a hotspot run and a drop set repeat? I'm happy to kind of go through them as we go through, but I think it's just the explanation of the terminology um, in the plan. So should we start with the on off session? So the on off sessions, we have quite a few of them. So let me just pull them up to make sure that I am referring to the right thing. Um, so, or first of all, let's go with the over under. Yeah, I'm just trying to find. 
in the thing, bear with me. So your on-off keys um, are where you'll have, you'll be practicing, to be honest, both sessions are actually quite similar. The difference between them um, is sometimes just literally the, the, the words you use. But with both the on and off and the over-unders, you're wanting to practice that kind of chain, change in pace. So for over-unders, it will typically have you alternating between, depending on the distance of the rep. So if we've got over-under 400s, you'd be kind of going over and under your 5K pace. So those, those quicker um, 400s would be slightly quicker than your 5K pace. And then we've got the recovery reps, to which would be slower than your 5K pace. But the point with both the on and off and the over under sessions is they're all continuous effort. So there's no static rest. And that really, really challenges you because you're not getting that full, that full rest for your heart rate to come right down. Um, so it's about maintaining not only the on pace or the over pace, but also the under pace as well and not letting that get too slow. Um, and then you've got the drop set intervals. So the difference with drop sets is you'll have um, a static rest in there where you will, yeah, you'll be able to just walk or, or stand still. I, I generally would encourage you to walk to keep warm and mobile. Um, but that will give you your, your chance for your heart rate to come right down um, before you then start your next interval. And those drop set intervals tend to be a bit punchier. So you're kind of operating at more like close to, I never like to say 100% because I don't think you should ever go 100% in training, but you really want to be going kind of like 90% effort. So you're really giving it all on those intervals. So that's why I was kind of saying, was there another session? Yeah, that's perfect. Um, and just for everyone's reference, uh, we are currently um, planning to make some videos on terminology for each of these um, sessions that will be ac accessible on YouTube. So um, hopefully it'll be kind of like a glossary of terms for you all. Um, okay. Um, I plan to walk the 100k as I've done this six times previously. I sometimes jog the downhill stretches. The published plans never cover walkers any tips. Um, I'm, I'm just going to take this one from um, Threshold's point of view. Um, they have informed me that they do have walking plans on their website. Um, so hopefully you can head to there um, and we'll, we, we'll be sure to get them to send you a link to them after the, the call. So hopefully you can access them. But um, that's a great effort with 100k um, walking. Yeah, amazing. Sometimes, sometimes a little bit harder because you're on your feet for a longer period of time. So the um, impact on the blisters and whatnot. But um, good luck and I hope it goes well. Um, Steph, if I'm finding my week, my current week challenging, shall I take a step back even though this might affect my overall plan? Yeah, I would say that if you're finding it challenging, then definitely drop a run or reduce the volume, the distances of your run slightly. You could also um, replace any of the runs with kind of non-impact forms of exercise. So that would be on the bike or in the swimming pool or on the elliptical trainer. And that th those non-impact forms are just a bit kinder to your legs. You're not having the, the impact from running, which really puts more stress on your joints, muscles, tissues. So if another option is to kind of offload a bit and that means you're still working. So you're still getting that cardiovascular training, but just without the same, um, yeah, without the same harshness, let's say on your, on your body. So you're more likely to recover better. So I would say definitely adapt. I would encourage everyone to, to be flexible with their plan. I don't know anyone that's done an ultra or a marathon plan that's been able to tick off every session to the absolute T. You're going to, miss sessions and that's that's absolutely okay be prepared for that rest and recovery is all part of training as well so do listen to your body perfect um we're gonna head to the chat box now um so people here in the call um so I've got a, um, a message paul if you can can you put yourself on mute um i don't know whether you can i don't know whether you know that you're not um <laughs> Daniel, we've uh, got a message from Daniel. So I'm running Brighton Marathon and then Manchester Marathon two weeks later. Any tips on what to best do in between and recover and be ready for the second marathon? Um, I generally run 35 to 40 miles per week at the moment, FYI. Okay, cool. So after Brighton, which is your first marathon, I would tend to take at least kind of five days not running after that to let yourself fully recover. If you do want to do anything, then I would do something that's not impact. So you're just getting yourself moving at a really light effort, but again, without adding the impact. 
Um, I then would kind of do a few days of kind of five, six K easy runs. Um, and then in that final week before Manchester, if you're used to kind of running 35 miles, I would just again, like tick over with easy running, but keep your mileage kind of around kind of up to like 25 miles for that week. Um, you could introduce a little bit of intensity by doing something like some strides as part of a run. So strides are kind of like um, 15 to 20 second efforts at kind of like 80%. So again, like not flat out, but just getting the legs turning a bit quicker. And you could kind of do like five to six of them at the end of an easy run just to get that intensity back in your legs. But you're not doing loads of it that it's really going to fatigue you again. So you're ready then for Manchester Marathon. Great. Um, we've got a question from Peter. Um, I think, I think Peter, I think just if you can chat and you can either answer back or you can write in the chat. I think you're doing the, you're doing the hundred K over the two days. Um, but I'll read it out anyway, if correct me if I'm wrong from my understanding. Um, a lot of people I know say to do two long runs back to back each week for the hundred K race, but your plan seems to be a little shorter run on the Friday and the longer run on the Saturday. I'm wanting to do your plan, but wondering about the back-to-back -back thing. Why don't you do two long runs back-to-back? Um, -back? Can you explain the logic to me to put my mind at rest? Um, I'm currently doing a couple of marathons a year, but never, never have gone beyond the 50K so far. So getting ready for my longest distance. Um, or when he's doing the 100K straight through. He's just confirmed. Thanks, Peter. Wow, that's a big, big, big effort. Um, we'll be there <laughs> on the day anyway. Um, so we'll, we'll come to both events and we'll be there cheering you on. But yes, yeah, Seth. You, yeah, that's amazing, Peter. Um, so it would be interesting to know as well what ability you're running at, because again, like whether you do back to back long runs will depend on how experienced you are. I mean, you, the fact you do a couple of marathons a year and you've already gone up to 50K, I'm suggesting suggesting me that you're, you're quite experienced. Um, you could, if you if that's something you want to try and test is doing the back to back long runs then that is something that um, I'm sure that we could also cater for. But um, I wouldn't wouldn't encourage it if it's something that's completely new to you. I think also spreading out your mileage throughout the week, you still get the same training benefit, but you're just going to reduce that chance of yeah, injury or fatigue by just having that recovery in between. And if you are going to want to do like two long runs back to back, uh, definitely keep the, the effort of those on the easier side. Again, just because the faster you run, the more um, stress you're putting on your body. So you just want to manage that intensity. And I think for, for ultras generally, it is about focusing on getting as much time on your feet as you can. So, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's good to have some speed in there and some intervals in there for the variety. But um, if you're ever unsure, then just getting out there and banking time on your feet should be the main goal. Um, but I think some of our plans do maybe have the back to back long runs. It will just depend on what ability you've selected. Um, and Peter, just on that as well, if you um, do download the app, um, everyone gets a kind of free trial with using the code threshold. And we can then, um, if you contact us via the support tab and just say, actually, this week I want to try it, that's something that we can adapt your plan or kind of make a suggestion during that week of how you um, were to do it. But yeah, like I said, start, start slowly. But okay. Um, we have a question, but it's already, it's been answered, but um, we're gonna, uh, it's been answered by someone else in the chat, which is great. Um, so someone's running the um, Race of the Stones 100K and thinking about doing the Race of the Kings 50K as a training event. Um, and I think it's about four or five weeks prior. Um, am I risking injury or would this help me get used to the distance and terrain? Um, from my point of view, I think from the threshold guys, a lot of people do this. Um, a lot of people use that kind of race to the king as a training run for race to the stones, but um, I'll let Steph kind of talk you through the, the training part and the injury risk. Yeah, I would definitely think that it would be a good idea to, if you, especially if you're doing the 100k or to do a 50k race as part of your training would be great. Um, again, just like be mindful of that effort, just maybe save the hard, hard effort for your A race, um, which is which is probably going to be the 100k, -er, but definitely not only practicing that like the distance but also your race day nutrition what you'd have for breakfast before you before you run and what you're going to wear what you're going to carry all these things are really important so if you can practice in a race environment which feels more like what it's going to be on on your race day 
um, I think is also really helpful. And just to have other people running around with you as well also is going to make it a lot more fun. So I think definitely I'd be up for people doing that. But I would try and do it at least kind of like um, five, four weeks out from your race. You don't want to do it in the last few weeks. It's just getting a bit too soon. Um, perfect. Sorry, I've got some um, dogs behind me. So that's, if they start whinging, that is their lunchtime. Um, so how do you work out... Um, race pace versus easy run training pace um how much slower would i need to go marathon race pace for example is around um 4 30 kilometer pace um slow training runs are about 5 30 to 5 45 and i'm doing the 100 um kilometer one day running so yeah just how to work out um race pace versus easy run training pace so your easy run training pace is going to fluctuate from day to day depending on how tired you are what training you did the day before, how much sleep you had, and um, the terrain you're running on, if it's really windy outside. So I don't ever think there's actually like a set easy run pace that you could you can run at. And um, for me, like my easy run pace will fluctuate by kind of 20, 30 seconds a kilometer sometimes. So you just have to listen to your body and use metrics such as like, can you hold a conversation when you're running? Are you a little bit out of breath, but definitely can yeah, you're, you're not finding your, your breathing rate and your heart rate is, is through the roof. It's very controlled. It's very comfortable. So with your easy runs, the, the slower you can go, the better. Like there's 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 no set upper limit you, you have to hit for that. So I would listen to your body for then. And for ultra race pace as well, like that's also going to massively vary throughout the race. Um, if you're going uphill, you're obviously going to be running a lot slower. If the terrain is a lot more rocky, again, that's going to be slower. If you're coming downhill, it's going to be quicker. So it's about kind of gauging that effort. And that's where doing a race like beforehand might be a good plan where you can kind of play around with how that effort will feel. You can also use things which is going to go into a whole other conversation like heart rate. So I actually do a lot of my easy runs to heart rate. Um, and that just helps me kind of switch off from pace and know that I'm running in the right zone. Um, and again, you could do that for race day as well. If you know there's a heart, what your heart rate zones are and what you can sustain for a very long effort, then you could you can run to that. Um, perfect. And Runner will be uh, working on bringing out some heart rate um, based plans uh, coming up soon. Um, don't want to tell you all the secrets, but that is on our kind of pipeline. Um, we've just got a comment from Helen here, just uh, sharing her experience. So she ran um, this eight years ago. She did a half marathon every Sunday with short, four short runs and intervals and hills in the week and then strength training. Um, she unfortunately got shin splints on the second day um, and the second year she ran it, um, but she was injured. Uh, her, her knee was injured. My biggest advice would be lots um, of strength training to avoid injury. Um, I think Steph, you'd definitely echo that. Yeah, I would definitely echo that. I think um, if you are someone that's had like a recurring injury, especially, then it's always worth dropping a run if you have to due to time constraints to fit in kind of two strength sessions a week. And just also being able to do things like at home as well is a lot more convenient. Like we have on the runner app a strength um, section where you can type in like what, what equipment you have. And if you can do one strength session at home, it's going to be a lot more convenient for you. You're more likely to fit it in. But really focusing on yeah, keeping strong is going to really help with um, injury prevention. So a massive fan of, of strength training. Perfect. Um, and we've just seen one more question. We've got five more minutes. So um, if anyone's got any burning questions, this is your chance to put them um, in the uh, chat box. Um, Nick, I'm doing Run to the Kings 100k straight through. Uh, what would be more important to build up the distance of the long run or simply the overall weekly mileage? I think if you're new to running, I think if you're new to running, I would build, focus on the, the weekly mileage because um, doing those long runs could be more of an injury risk. And if you just throw yourself in with like a, a half marathon, say, then that's going to, yeah, it's going to be really demanding on your body. So initially, anyway, I would kind of split the plan up into kind of half. And I would focus on the, or even for the first 10 weeks, just focus on that weekly mileage and building that up slowly. And then for kind of four weeks um, out before the race, five weeks out before the race, you could throw in a few longer runs and um, just build up that confidence. But um, getting the mileage in and spreading it out through the week is what I would go for. 
Perfect. Um, I think that's it. I will give it a couple more minutes in case anyone's got any uh, final questions. But um, thank you everyone for joining and for those who um, haven't joined, I hope you find this beneficial and we've answered some of your questions. Um, we are always available um, pretty much 24 seven on the Runner support app. So if you um, download Runner or just message us in the support tab of the app and you can access that whether you're a paying customer or you're not. Um, you can ask us any questions, you can adapt your training um, and Steph will actually answer them herself. Um, so we have kind of yeah, coaches on hand um, the whole time so we can um, provide that. But yeah, a massive thank you to Steph. Um, if you've liked this, um, we are more than happy to kind of put this on more in future with different questions and different events and different bits and bobs. Um, and uh, we are actually hosting a run this weekend on the South Downs Way. We are running from Lewis to Brighton. Um, there's two routes, there's a 13 kilometer route and a 21K route um, with support from High Five along the way. Um, if anyone would like to join us, um, please do head to run at Instagram. You can sign up there. It's completely free. Um, and then we're going to go to Brighton Seafront after for some food. Um, and yeah, just thanks very much, everyone. And um, uh, you can use the code THRESHOLD to get your two weeks for free at Runner. Great. Good luck, everyone. Looking forward to hearing how everyone gets on. And yeah, shout if any questions. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye.